I can't help but feel if Tony Abbott were the opposition leader, this government would probably be, to use the colloquialism, stale bread. Tony Abbott was one of the very, very few who warned about the coronavirus response. Now, I see this as a very big issue unresolved. As you know, I argued against all this testing, vaccines, masks, lockdowns, shutting kids out of school, stopping people from visiting their grieving families, arresting people for sitting on a park bench. And of course, I was cancelled. But everything I said at the time has now been proven to be true. We knew from the outset who the vulnerable were. People with comorbidities, the elderly, and Indigenous Australians in remote communities. We knew that. The rest of Australia should have been allowed to get on with their lives. Remember when Craig Kelly, the then federal member for Hughes, produced proof of the effectiveness of cheap drugs like ivermectin. He was vilified and called a foghorn of ignorance. Big Pharma, you see, had all the answers, vaccination. But to this day, we've never been told what the big pharmaceutical companies were paid. The poor mug taxpayer was told that everything was free. Coronavirus tests were free, vaccine one was free, vaccine two was free, booster one was free, booster two was free, and the big farmer just kept counting the money. You and I, to this day, have been told nothing about the cost, and we can't get that information. I remember in one of the many interviews I did, Craig Kelly cited an open letter from a raft of distinguished UK doctors to the chief executive of the Medicines and Healthcare Products regulatory agency in Britain. Now, they're responsible for ensuring that medicines and medical devices work and are acceptably safe. The letter of several pages expressed concern that the coercion being exercised to accept a certain medical treatment, namely vaccination, was against UK and international laws and declarations. In part, the letter said, and I quote, no medical intervention should be introduced on a one-size-fits-all basis, but should be fully assessed for suitability, according to the characteristics of the age cohort and of the individual's concern. The letter from eminent health professionals, deans of medicine concluded, there is wisdom in the Hippocratic Oath, which states first, do no harm. And the letter argued, all medical interventions carry risk of harm. So we have a duty to act, it said, with caution and proportionality. This is particularly, said the case, when considering mass intervention in a healthy population, in which situation, the letter said, there must be firm evidence of benefits far greater than harm, unquote. I've quoted in the past one Dr. Jeffrey Bark a board certified primary care physician from Orange County in Southern California, one of many, many people. He had personally treated multiple COVID-19 patients. None of them needed hospitalization or died. He argued that COVID-19, like any infection, was serious, but that people should not be afraid. But then he said this, and I quote, as things now stand, we've reached a point where it's impossible to differentiate medical truth from medical fiction, health information, from health misinformation. He said there's never been an organised effort to censor and completely shut down opinions that differ from the mainstream in the last 200 years of medical practice like is happening now. Shut them down. If you disagreed, shut them down. And I've, I've told you before, Peter McCulloch is one of the world's leading epidemiologists. I had an interview recorded with him. You can't do it. McCulloch will mention ivermectin or something. Shut down. Still being shut down. I'll come to that in a minute. But he went on. Currently, any information that casts concern about one of the approved COVID-19 vaccinations is censored. And the source is accused of being anti-science, fear-mongering, publicity-seeking, or part of a fringe group to be shunned. Of course, shall I say here that those who did express concern have proven to be right. Right. 